Hi, this is Adrian and in this video, I'm going to cover the definitive checklist that you need to have to avoid common private property buying mistakes like most of the other first-time private property buyers. Buying a private property is likely one of the biggest investment decisions you have to make in your life and it involves a lengthy process filled with complexities if you do it wrongly. Having this checklist will not only put you a step ahead in the planning process but also potentially saving you costly mistakes before you take your first plunge into the private property market. The first one is to ensure that you have sufficient holding power. Sufficient holding power means having the ability to hold on to your property throughout the ups and downs of the property cycle so that you can actually buffer for unexpected situations. If you lack the holding power, you may be forced to sell your property at a market downturn and may potentially experience a loss. How do you know whether you have sufficient holding power? Firstly, ensure that you have a safety net or reserve fund to tide through your monthly payments. In the event that either you or your spouse gets unemployed, this reserve fund will be able to pay for your monthly property installments. The second one is to buy at the right entry price. Buying at the right entry price is probably one of the most important factor when deciding to buy your private property. Why is it important? Because you do not want to be overpaying for your property. One way is to check the surrounding projects for similar latest transactions and their average prices and PSF. For example, if the surrounding transactions are at an average of $1,100 per square feet, you do not want to be paying for $1,300 per square feet. Another way is to obtain an indicative valuation from the bankers to understand the estimated value of the unit that you are interested in and also check the latest average PSF within that project. If the unit that you are getting is priced way above the average price, then you may want to think twice. Thirdly, get your finances right. The first step to calculating your finances is to obtain an in-principle approval from the bank to understand your maximum loan eligibility. You definitely do not want to put a deposit for a property only to find out afterwards that you are unable to fulfill the contract due to a loan or finance issue and may end up forfeiting a hefty sum. After obtaining your IPA, calculate what is the down payment that is required for the property and the monthly installments that are required to service the loan. And from there, formulate a budget that you are comfortable with. The fourth one is to avoid being emotional with your property purchase. Know your facts and figures. Don't be influenced by your peers into thinking that buying a private property for the lifestyle or investment is the best way forward for you and your family. One way to avoid buying a property with emotions is to be crystal clear with your priorities. Are you buying this property for your own stay or investment objectives? If you are buying for your own stay, other factors may be more important than just pure profit or loss, such as your preference within a certain location, proximity to amenities, and also good school for your kids. But if you are buying for an investment objective, then you want to scrutinize into the profitability factors of your decision and put on the thinking cap of a property investor. Lastly, avoid overstretching your finances. It may be tempting to spend more to buy a bigger size room or one with high-end finishings, but be prudent and do so within your means. Take into account your own personal commitments such as insurance payments, personal monthly expenses or child expenses on top of servicing this monthly property installments. One thing that I do for my clients is to also plan out worst case scenarios and also stress test their finances. For example, we understand that interest rate may fluctuate from time to time. You should use an interest rate that is higher than the market interest rate to estimate your monthly installments to ensure that you are still comfortable with the monthly installments in the event interest rates rise. 
So this is the definitive checklist that you should go through as a first-time private property buyer. Just to recap, they are ensuring that you have sufficient holding power, buy at the right entry price, get your finances right, avoid being too emotional, and lastly, avoid overstretching your finances. So here's the good news. If you would like access to a free property coaching program where you will learn a lot from me and you do not need to pay a single cent, all you have to do is click below, submit, and I'll reach out to you with regards to your enrollment. Once again, I'm Adrian and I'll see you soon.